gambling is much more accessible, much easier uh, any time or place. And we know that gambling is occurring during work hours and, and this can either be in the form of you know, just simply someone sitting at their desk um, and gambling away without anybody knowing about it. Distractions in the workplace are more evident than ever before. A new report suggests Australian employees are gambling on their boss's time. Not that long ago, you used to have to get in the car, drive to TAB, put a bet on, and, and then hopefully win some money. You can literally bet every few seconds now. You, we're all carrying casinos in our pockets. Um, so we need to understand what, what does that do to a society? Um, and, and how does that increase the risks of people developing problems with gambling? Oftentimes, gambling is seen as a way that you might be able to get out of that, that money trap. Ironically, for many people, of course, it only makes the situation worse. The difference with Australia is that we spend a lot more per capita than any other country. Um, so despite having similar levels of uh, participation, we have uh, expenditure rates which are double or triple um, other comparable countries. Workplaces in the changing face of gambling is the focus for the Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation during Responsible Gambling Awareness Week. This year's Responsible Gambling Awareness Week is all about, with particular focus on um, how is it impacting families uh, in terms of this whole changing gambling environment. These activities um, are easily accessible through phones and tablet devices which are very popular amongst business and working people. And so what we're seeing is uh, an increasing involvement of gambling amongst a demographic who perhaps in the past didn't gamble quite as much. Sports betting and casino games like online poker lead the charge on web-related gambling activities, with thousands of illegal sites easily accessible due to minimal regulation on the internet. Like many things, it can cause flow-on effects right across the community. And I think everybody's got an interest in addressing this and making for greater responsibility in gambling. I've seen the, the, the impact that this has had firsthand. Former footballer Wayne Swass knows what can go wrong when gambling gets out of control. Helping a relative overcome addiction, Swass says there needs to be better education about gambling responsibly. That's part of what makes this country great. It, you know, having a beer and having a punt and having a good time with your friends. I'm not going to sit here and say don't do that. What I'd encourage people to do though is before you actually start to do or make some of those decisions, plan it. What can I afford to play with? What can I afford to lose if I happen to lose? And what's my cut-off point? The Premiership player says football and other sporting clubs also have an important role in the issue. I have a philosophical view in regards to any social issue and the connection between sport and the people that follow the sport, and that is we have an enormous responsibility. One club taking that responsibility seriously is the Collingwood Football Club the latest sporting club to sign the Responsible Gambling Charter. The Collingwood Football Club's into side by side and that's about looking after your family and friends and people around you and, and sometimes it takes someone else to see the problem developing. The club has also taken the step to stop any communication about gambling to their members under the age of 18. Oh, there's no doubt that every sporting club, including the AFL clubs, have a responsibility to their supporters and members to ensure that that sensitive age group of under 18 isn't bombarded with the communications that can happen on a daily basis. It's easy to think about this as just a problem or an issue, but like many things, it can cause flow-on effects right across the community. And I think everybody's got an interest in addressing this and making for greater responsibility in gambling. The Institute of Family Studies has researched the effects of gambling, but says the key is prevention. I'm a great believer in early intervention and prevention as far as possible. And you know, it's better to have um, basically a fence at the top of the cliff rather than ambulances at the bottom. And the latest report by the Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation shows prevention is just as important in the workplace for employers as it is for gamblers. This year we're, we're, we're launching a program for employers and workplaces to, to really start to get um, uh, you know, ra raise their understanding of their employees gambling in the workplace. So what we do know is that employers have a duty of care to maintain a healthy and safe workplace. Um, and there may be a risk that if an employer allows employees to gamble, say on their own phones or iPads or workplace computers, there could be a liability for employers because essentially, indirectly, they've endorsed or supported that particular activities. The Foundation has also released a gaming venue best practice guide that sets the benchmark for all licensed venues in Victoria. 
Responsible gambling, I think, um, is very well advanced in Australia. I think compared with many other countries around the world, we do very well in responsible gambling. We have um, mandatory codes of practice, a uh, number of specific guidelines about how um, venues operate. So I think we're doing pretty well. Uh, there's certainly plenty of more, plenty more work to do. We're not an anti-gambling foundation. We recognise that for many people, gambling is a legitimate form of entertainment. Um, what we want to do through Responsible Gambling Awareness Week is, is really send a message that similar to, to alcohol, it is an activity that, that has risks associated with it. If I'm going to bet, I'm going to bet responsibly 